Well, then let's hear about some of the countries. So, uh, Eve Hi Un. Uh, I searched about Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And Switzerland has two problems about the tax and international pressure. Government, the government tried to face international pressure, which means they are trying to uh, decrease international products from their country. Mm -hmm. uh, and then about tax board and tax, uh, their government tax, uh, in their country, tax burdens are very, uh, very, various. Depends on territories, so. We gotta check about tax before we start business there. Okay, so usually a country like Switzerland, uh, we're not that worried about the political and economic risk, right? Switzerland is very stable politically. Yeah. Perhaps it could have some economic risk. For well, economic risk, Switzerland has a, the problem with uh, like EU, uh, uh, Euro. Mm -hmm. The Switzerland dollar pound, as I know. The Swiss franc is <laughs> yeah. uh, here. It, it mentions here, right? Yeah. In 2015, the Swiss franc abandoned its Swiss franc 120 to 1 euro exchange rate ceiling. Yeah. Of the so the Swiss franc can get stronger. Yeah. There, right? So what does that mean for if you're a company? What's the problem if you have a very strong Swiss franc? What does that mean for your company's plan? can be hard for exporting some products. Exporting from where? From um, my country or some other country. So if we have a strong Swiss franc yeah. and you're exporting from Korea, is that better for your, your company or worse for your... You're yeah. manufacturing in Korea and you're exporting to Switzerland and you have a strong Swiss franc. Is that better or worse for your company? Worse for us. How is it worse? The Swiss franc is... If the Swiss franc is strong, yeah. let's say that you're in the, the, we have 120 Swiss francs, right? Then is one, let's say, chung won, okay? So if the Swiss franc gets stronger, how many Swiss francs would we get for chung won? More or less? Less. So the, it's going to be one franc to one won. Okay, so I'm selling my goods in Korea. I'm Kia, I'm Kia, right? I'm manufacturing in Korea, paying my salaries in won. So the Kia, the Kia car costs twenty million won, right? How many Swiss francs is that at this exchange rate? It's going to be multiplied by about eight. Hmm? It's going to be about twenty-four thousand Swiss francs, right? For Kia car, 20 million in Korea, 24,000 in Switzerland. Okay, now the Swiss franc is stronger. How much does the car cost in Switzerland now? 20,000 20, Swiss francs. <laughs> in which case are the Swiss people going to buy more Kia cars? 24,000 Swiss francs or 20,000 Swiss francs? 20, they still earn the same salary. So now, if I'm exporting from Korea, is a strong Swiss franc better for me or worse for me? Better for us better for you, okay? So what's the advantage? What would be the advantage for a company of a strong Swiss franc? The importing Or sorry, disadvantage. So that's advantage for the exporting company, right? But what's the disadvantage? The importing company. You could be importing from Switzerland, yeah. or you could be thinking about setting up a factory or a plant in Switzerland, okay? If you're going to set up a factory or a plant in Switzerland, and uh, the Swiss franc gets stronger, means everything is more expensive. Okay, so you want to buy land in Switzerland, it's more expensive. You want to hire workers in Switzerland, it's more expensive. Okay, do you understand? Yeah. So that's the, the risk there. Okay, anything else? Any other economic risk? That's all. Is it a high, what's the economy like? Is it a high growth economy? Yeah, high growth. It's very stable. They have also low growth, but it has a high income, right? So, we, as I say, in Switzerland, we're just going to focus on the economy. Uh, 
we can see these kind of figures here and for Switzerland and the economic growth figure compared to the world ones. Uh, you mentioned about some tax. Here they have migration, right? Maybe uh, risk to the EU. And also if the EU has a problem, Switzerland does a lot of trade with the EU. Okay? So we can look at these kind of articles. Okay? Uh, you talked about tax as well. They have some, Switzerland is under pressure from abroad. So then, uh, Kim Bam Sok, what country did you choose? Denmark. Another, I should have said, when you're doing this exercise, it's better to choose not the best. The Denmark and Switzerland are like the most stable and safe countries in the world, right? This exercise is about the political and economic risk. But anyway, let's have a look at Denmark. Again, <coughs> I don't think we need to <coughs> worry that much about Denmark. But let's have a look and see. So what did you find out about Denmark? What did you find out about Denmark? Did you find out any information? Kim Bom Sok? What did you find out about Denmark? Uh, there are some risks, like currency risk. There is a political risk. So can you explain about that? Did you do this exercise? No. No? Then just tell me that you didn't do it. It's quicker. Okay? So then let's see. Just I want hands up who prepared. You prepared. Put your hand up. If you did the exercise, then put up your hand. Okay? So what country did you choose? Oh, South Korea. South Korea. So what's the risk like in South Korea? In case of political risks. There's a coming parliamentary election, election coming mm -hmm. this April, so it got worse from the political risk uh, rate got worse. Okay. And also the, um, the rising tension of the North Korean, North Korean government also had an effect. I see an article here on rising tensions, right? Yeah. North Korea. And the uh, election. Yes. What about the economy? In case of the eco economy is because South Korea is um, very an um, exporting country. Mm -hmm. It it uh, it's heavily dependent on external external demands. Mm -hmm. mm, for example, if, um, because there are some cheaper alternatives in exporting. Mm -hmm. uh, like China. Yes. So they're losing. Korea is losing market share in that area. Okay. And both they score a uh, BBB in the ratings. Okay, so the exports are declining at the moment. Yes. In Korea, the trend. They still have good exports, mm -hmm. right? Uh. Then over here, Kim Sung Hee. Kim Sung Hee, what country did you? Uh, Arab Emirates. United Arab Emirates. <coughs> so what can you tell us about that? Um. <coughs> <coughs> so 
GDP growth we are remaining with because of low oil price. Mm -hmm. um, so your oil price slump, slump means going down, right? Uh, but, but the government we are focused on economic diversification to promote non oil growth. Okay. What kind of government do they have? Is, is that a kingdom or do they have a democratic government? Kingdom. Kingdom? They have a king? Saudi Arabia, for example, is a kingdom. They have a king. They don't have a democratic government. Basically because they have so much oil, they didn't, their country didn't have to modernize. Most of the countries, they made a democratic system because there was some revolution. You understand revolution? People fought for the freedom or in the wars. But Saudi Arabia, they had oil in, since the 19th century. So they always had money, so people didn't complain much. So they still just have king. Right? This one, UAE, did you find out about that? What, what, what kind of politics they have there? What kind of government do they have? Do you know? Political structure here? Okay, so I need to log in for this one. Just to register. Uh, one of the problems with the Middle Eastern countries generally is the same as Saudi Arabia. They haven't modernized their economy, right? You said they're trying to diversify because they're too dependent on oil. And now the oil price has gone down very low. So it's like they have the resource curse. It means they have a lot of resources, so they just sit back and don't try. Right? So their economy is not modernized because they just have the oil money and they live off the oil money, right? It's like a rentier economy. So their education systems and their uh, health system, public services are like very low standard, okay, compared to other countries. They didn't modernize. Do you understand modernize? Yes. Apart from some of, but some of the people is very rich, they're very wealthy, they have a high GDP, even though they're not modernized. What kind of things would you like to sell here? What kind of business would you like to do here? Korean trade Korean shaved ice. Korean shaved ice? It's a Korean dessert. Oh, okay. I see. Alright. Uh, they get a lot of tourists in Dubai. Dubai is especially wealthy people. Right? Like professional soccer players from the UK love them go to Dubai on holidays because it's so expensive that other people can't go there. When I was young, the professional soccer players used to go to Italy because nobody else could afford to go to Italy. But nowadays, everybody can go to Italy, so the professional soccer players have to find somewhere else. <coughs> Dubai, one of the most expensive cities in the world. Okay, so we saw some different countries there. Uh, we can use this kind of resources, the Economist Intelligence Unit. If we're working for the company, we can ask our company to subscribe and we can get the paid data, right? Here they, are, they have so much data, you can see for free after you register some other data you need to pay for. That's not, the Economist Intelligence Unit is not the only resource we can use for finding out about the economic and political risk, okay? Uh, we also had, we mentioned the credit rating for the countries, can also give us an idea the Trading Economics website is, uh, shows the credit ratings. Credit rating is uh, telling us, can the country pay back the money? So when the credit rating agencies are making their calculation, of course, the level of debt to GDP is, one of the, is probably the most important thing. But political and economic risk is also included. So some people who just are, want to find quite quickly an idea 
of the political and economic situation of the country. Okay, just look at the credit rating. Right, that's very quick. Okay, so we can see here credit Australia has a credit rating of AAA. So we would say Australia, not much economic and political risk, right? So this is a very quick way. Other countries, we can see very low here, Belize, Bolivia, Bosnia and Herzegovina. They're getting low grades and low score, right? Just 28 here, okay? Congo, 25. Denmark, 99, AAA, okay? Probably maybe the best one. Switzerland might also be, one, what's 100? Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Netherlands. So I mean, those kind of countries, we're not really worried about economic and political risk. We may just look more at the economic risk. Is there some economic risk for their economy? We're not going to be that worried about political risk in those countries. Uh, Switzerland, 100. Sweden, 99. Okay. So those are usually Denmark, Sweden, Luxembourg, Switzerland, some of the most stable countries in the world. On the other hand, we have the transition economies in Africa. Maybe 50 very poor economies, which is a very risky economy, which has the war and so on. So we didn't finish uh, the lecture the last time, so let's continue to look at what do the companies like the EIU, when they're making their rating, the EIU also makes a rating for the country, what kind of things do they look at? So, they also look at the credit risk here. So the last time we talked about the political risk, and we didn't have enough time to finish. So companies, we can also try to lessen our political vulnerability. If we're in a country which has a higher <laughs> political instability, we can try to manage the instability. So the relationship between the government and the company is positive if the investment is held in the country, right? So we can make the case to the local politicians, our company is creating jobs, our, we're investing, we're helping the country, okay? We can explain, we're going to use the local food stuff, okay? So do you know Tesco? Yes. Tesco is a UK company. They came to Ireland. A little bit of Ireland and uh, England, a little bit of, uh, we said, the na nationalism problem, right? Same as Korea and Japan. You guys talked about there is some nationalism, right, between the countries we mentioned as a type of political risk here. Okay? So, animosity targeted towards specific countries or nationalism. Okay? So, of course, Tesco had that problem in Ireland, because in Ireland we had the Irish supermarket, okay? And then we have new supermarket, English supermarket, Tesco's. So do you think people are going to shop in Tesco's or the Irish supermarket? Irish supermarket. Right, so it's so, and also Tesco can have some problem with getting planning permission. Do you understand planning permission? trying to build a supermarket. Maybe the local government don't give them permission because they don't like them because they're from England. That kind of thing, right? They don't give them the permit. They have a harder time for everything. So we, Tesco wants to manage that kind of risk. They want to enter the Irish market. They think they can make profit. So they want to manage that risk. So what did Tesco do? They used all the locally produced food, right? They made big advertisement. They were using Irish beef and Irish potatoes and Irish. None of their things were going to come from England, right? So they're making the point that we're keeping and creating the jobs in Ireland, okay? <coughs> they're transferring capital, technology, and skills. So Irish people can learn from the Tesco, right? They're transferring new skills coming to Ireland. 
they're creating jobs. Okay, they're paying tax. So they have to stress all of these points, make the argument with the politicians, okay, or maybe in the advertisement. We're doing some positive thing, helping out. <coughs> uh, political parties can often focus public opinion on the negative part of the MNCs. Sometimes they use them as scapegoats. It means politicians made a bad policy, but they like to blame the foreign company. Or they want to, to make their own interest, to get elected in the next election. So we can see this in India. India has uh, traditionally some issue with uh, foreign companies because it had colo colonial past, so the British came to India. So Indians have a kind of negative idea of foreign companies in India. Okay? So a politician in India, I want to be popular, pick on the foreign company, right? Oh, look at the bad foreign company, they're polluting the environment, damaging things. So it can be a problem for the company. So they need, the company needs to try and push the positive points with the politicians. Other strategies we can use, this is very common in China or Korea, joint ventures. Okay? So it means that I want to do business in Korea, but in Korea the relationship is very important. Okay? They have a slightly different culture. Or maybe I'm Japanese, okay? so I think I could have an issue in Korea. So I make a joint venture. I join with the Korean company. And when I go to meet people, it's the Korean person who can go to meet the people. They can be the face, right? And the Korean people already know about the law in Korea. They're already familiar with the politics in Korea. Okay? So I can leave that part to the Korean people's responsibility. Do you understand joint venture? Yes. Yeah. So a lot of companies, when they come to Asia, European companies, they like to make the joint ventures. Uh, they feel like if I have a local partner, political risk is lower, right? There's lower risk that the government is going to shut down my factory because I'm joined with the local people, okay? There's lower risk that they're not going to give me permission, they're not going to give me license, those kind of things. Uh, we can get more investors, we can use licensing, do you understand licensing? We uh, very commonly used for the drug companies. We'll talk about it market entry. So I make a new drug, then I could sell this in Korea, but I'm a small company from Ireland. What could happen to me? I start selling my drug in Korea. Right? I'm just a small company from Ireland. What could happen? Be a problem for me. Perhaps another Korean company could start to copy. They could make a very similar drug and sell in Korea. What am I going to do? I'm just a small company from Ireland. Am I going to come to Korea and make a court case against the Korean company in the Korean court? Why not? I don't have the money or the time and I think Korean court might be biased, right? They might bias towards the Korean company. So if I license in, I just sell the rights to use and then that becomes the problem of the Korean company. I sell the license of my product to the Korean company and now they sell the drug in Korea. And if somebody copies them, they're in a better position. Okay? They're in Korea, they're Korean. They have already have lawyers. Okay? They can protect themselves more easily. Okay? Uh, we can have political bargaining. Some, this is illegal, right? Political payoffs, paying money to the politicians. Some companies do that. Okay, well it's illegal. We can get insurance, but insurance against political risk is very expensive. It's hard to measure, so it's very expensive. So we don't get usually insurance much. Sometimes we can just add a risk premium to investments. So we're investing in this country, it has political risk, so we need to get 5% more profit, or else we don't invest in that country. So then discuss these questions with your partner. Give three types of political risk. Give an example of how a company can be affected by terrorism. Give an example of a politically sensitive product. And give three examples of how companies can lessen, try to make less the political risk.
<coughs> uh, uh. Unusual type, right? More usual type is kind of regulation, right? They make some regulation against us. Or kind of animosity, nationalism. These days we have terrorism. Che uh, Jin Yong, the second question. The company can lose their business data or they can lose their. About such as product in in warehouse. Yes, I mean cyber terrorism on the first one. Yes. I didn't understand the second one. Second one is um, if there is their warehouse in somewhere, mm -hmm. the terrorist they did. The warehouse. <coughs> they their uh, is it usual for terrorists to attack warehouses? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of companies are especially affected by terrorism? 
David Tour. Well, any company involved in travel? Okay, next uh, question. Uh, uh, give an example of a politically sensitive product. Rice, why? Korea and US FTA, mm -hmm. they didn't go rice, but when they open the rice, they need Korean rice is more expensive than US rice, so maybe they need uh, ah, okay. So you mean that Koreans don't want to compete with the Americans because American rice is cheaper, so they don't don't want to buy American rice. Do you buy American rice? Maybe that's cheap. I will really buy. Yeah. I'll have to look for it in the supermarket the next time. <laughs> but my wife tells me to buy the green rice. So maybe I can't. The rice is slightly different type, maybe. In Europe, we usually eat Indian rice rather than Korean rice. Perhaps Britain conquered. India, so people is more used to Indian style rice there. And the last question, uh, Kim Yu Jong. Kim Yu Jong is Kim Yu Jong here? Not here. Kim Tae Kyun? Here. Mm -hmm. The company can uh, help for the con uh, countries by creating more jobs, uh, making tax contributions. Okay, so that's one point, is they can try to, they can try to sell the positive points, right? That's one example. Oh, uh, yeah, and you can uh, have joint venture yes. with other uh, local companies. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Mm -hmm. One more. Licensing. License, make a licensing, okay. So then let's move on to talk about economic risks. Do you have any question about political risk? So economic risk, this is more serious, exchange controls. Uh, some countries don't allow you to change back all the money. They put some control on how much you can exchange. Money you can exchange back to your own money. Okay. Uh, local content law. Countries require sometimes that you have to use local content or local products. Import restrictions. Uh, <laughs> we talked about the case of the bananas that the EU put the import restriction on the bananas coming from South America because they were too bendy. It was a strange one, right? Or they could put import restriction on the car because the door is not big enough, not wide enough for health and safety. Okay. So the idea of these kind of restrictions is to force people to purchase the host countries or the local industry products okay? instead of Foreign product. <clears throat> tax controls. So uh, the tax can be very high on your product. Price controls. Uh, in Brazil, uh, there was a big uh, discussion about pharmaceuticals because it's a hard question to answer. On one hand, you have the drug companies. The drug companies do a lot of R&D, right? They want to get paid their money back. So they want to get back their profit. On the other hand, you have in, in Brazil, you had the breast cancer. This was about breast cancer patient, right? Very poor. Who is poor and can't afford the drugs. Right, the drug maybe costs fifteen dollars a day. Right, fifteen dollars a day we would be able to pay for. Right, but in Brazil, poor people it makes just 
$200 a month, right? $15 a day is more than $200 a month. They don't have enough money. So the government in Brazil wants to control the price. But the company didn't agree, so the government started to copy. The government started to make their own, their own drug and sell for just 50 cents a day instead of $15, right? Cost price of manufacturing, just 15 cents. 50 cents, right? The main cost of the, making this drug is the R&D. Do you understand R&D? They have to do R&D for 5 years or 10 years. Not the production. The production is quite cheap. Okay. So, obviously the pharmaceutical companies were not happy. Brazil is quite a big market. India, the same thing happened in India. Right? Uh, so, the pharmaceutical company can lose money in that case when it's an essential product in the public interest. Uh, food, gasoline, those things can also have price controls in different countries. Uh, labor problems. Labor unions have, may have strong government support. They can get some concession from the business. <coughs> so what does the Economist Intelligence Unit check? So we looked at this one before the class. Uh, they have the country risk service. They make this risk for 100 developing countries, and they give them the ratings. They use 22% political risk, 28% economic policy, 27% economic structure, and 23% <coughs> liquidity. Liquidity means can the money move easily? in and out of the country? Is it, do they have liquid financial markets? Political risk. They look at these kind of things. War, social unrest. Do you understand social unrest? Demonstrations. Right? Violence. Do you understand violence? So, one thing which didn't help Greece in the, in the crisis in Europe was there was a lot of social unrest in Greece. So, do companies like social unrest? No. Right? People are on strike. They're not working. Okay? They're, the businesses get damaged. A lot, millions of dollars are lost if there's a big demonstration and a lot of businesses are damaged in the city center. Okay? So, this is going to give your country a worse political risk score. And then, somebody in the US is going to say, where should I invest my money? In Greece or in Denmark? Denmark. Right? Oh, the cost of labor is cheaper in Greece, but political stability in Denmark, really stable country, so I don't have to worry about that at all. So I think I'll set up my, my business in Denmark. Do you understand? So it can affect, this can affect the thinking of companies and the score. <coughs> Orderly political transfer. Uh, actually, Developed countries in the world, there's just about 30 or 31 countries in the OECD, right? Transition economies, transition economy is the poorest countries. Transition means changing, there are about 50 transition economies, mostly in sub-Sahara Africa and Southeast Asia, okay? And then the rest of the countries are developing, right? Or emerging. Emerging economies is going to be, so developed is about 30 or 31. So this is just a small part of the world. Okay? Most of the world is in emerging economy. India, China, right? BRICS, you know the BRICS? They have really big populations. So that's, uh, you know, there's probably close on 200 countries, so we're going to have 100 countries as uh, emerging economies, right? So, in developed economies, we generally have an orderly political transfer. That means that they have elections, and whoever wins the election is in the government, and whoever loses the election just goes home. Okay? But in other countries, it may not happen like that. For example, in South America, right? in some other countries, what happens is the military coup, you understand military coup? Take the military decides who the president is, okay? Or uh, we have the dictators in the Middle East, like we had Gaddafi and Saddam Hussein and so on, right? 
uh, that kind of thing. So quite disorderly, and the government can change. It may, it's not a properly run democratic election. Maybe in some countries the election is fixed, right? There's corruption at the election boxes. So all of this is problems for companies. Politically motivated violence. We saw in Thailand a few years ago, the red shirts, right? They, they're doing a lot of violence because of politics. And then international disputes. So Korea, does Korea have any of these first four things? Not really, but maybe the last one we saw Korea might get. International disputes, you're still at war officially with North Korea, okay? Maybe China and Japan had some dispute about some islands, okay? They got some worse score here. Political effectiveness, so this is more Right, this is more severe. We're talking here more about transition and emerging economies. But political effectiveness, this affects everybody. Okay? Pro business orientation. There is a list. How easy is it to do business in your country? Okay, for example, in Ireland, you want to set up a new company, maybe it takes 15 days. Okay? You go to another country. Uh, let's say we go to a very bureaucratic government, which is not so pro-business. Let's say we go to Pakistan. It's going to take six months to set up a new business. Okay? So companies like big governments, which don't have much bureaucracy, and they can do things quickly. So institutional effectiveness, it means legal system. Does the legal system work properly? Do the government organizations work properly? Is there some problem with the institutions in the country? Bureaucracy, do you understand bureaucracy? Do you like bureaucracy? Bureaucracy is also like paperwork. So one issue for me when I came to Korea is Korea is a more bureaucratic country than Ireland. It's the same for all the Irish people. So just I have to learn. Even though it doesn't make sense, I still have to do it. Right? So I'm asked to do these things, paperwork, and do this and do that, right? And I think, I don't need to do that. That's not useful and I don't need to do it, right? That's bureaucracy. Do you understand? So some governments, they made a lot of, they wanted to create jobs, right? So they made a lot of different offices. So first you have to go to this office, and then you need to go to this office, and then you need to go back to this office to get a stamp. And one of the reasons was the government wants to create more jobs for people. Okay? Do you know what I mean? Yes. So they do all that kind of bureaucratic thing. So some countries they have a very bloated public service where there are too many people working in the public service. They don't need that many people. They can tend to be quite bureau bureaucratic. And it takes a long time to get things done. Uh, Korea, of course, advantage is you have online, so you can do a lot of things online. It's quite useful. Uh, transparency. So, transparency linked with corruption. Can we see what the government is doing? Right? In Nigeria, uh, the government, people didn't know how much money the government was making from the oil. Okay, so then the people, uh, you know, complained. And the government started telling them, we make this much money from the oil every year. That's transparency. Transparency means you can see. We can see what's happening. We know everything is open for people to see. Okay? We're not hiding things. Corruption. Uh, we talked about corruption already, with, about culture and Transparency International. Corruption is a big issue in, in political risk because we already mentioned your German company Siemens and you want to get billion dollar contract you know making some infrastructure like tunnels or uh, subway or highways right in a country but the other company pays a bribe you lose all the business okay so that can be a problem crime Korea has low crime rate it's one of the advantages of living in Korea right Low crime. So with low crime, you get a better score on that point. Then, moving on from political risk, as I say, these are more important for the developed countries, okay? this, these areas. 
uh, economic policy, inflation rate, right? Monetary policy, lending rates, financial liberalization. Do we allow the money to come in and, and leave our country freely? For example, China wouldn't get a high score on financial liberalization because foreigners can't invest in the stock market in China, right? If you want to invest in China stocks, you need to invest in Hong Kong, right? So it's not easy to invest in. You can't buy stocks on the Shanghai stock market, okay? Why? The government wants to control the flow of money coming in and out of the country. Brazil recently brought in capital controls uh, because they thought their economy was overheating. Too much money coming in. So they start to put control. Capital control means in Brazil, if you want to invest in Brazilian bonds or stocks, you have to leave some money at the side in a deposit account. So deposit some money in an account for one year that you can't touch. So it's a way of slowing down the investments. That's not liberalized. Liberalization means freedom. Liberal is free. Okay? So is the financial free or not? Okay, so like the UK, the US has the most developed financial markets and the most liberalized. <coughs> but again, if we look at many emerging economies, they have control on the financial markets. <coughs> the exchange rate policy we mentioned for Switzerland, appreciation could be a risk. Okay? Especially if there's a crisis in Europe, the Swiss franc starts to appreciate because people sell their euros and buy the francs. Exchange rate regimes, <coughs> okay, fiscal policy, how much money is the government spending, public debt to GDP, very important for the credit rating, how much debt does the country have. Trade policy, is the con Korea is going to score highly for trade policy, a lot of FTAs. Okay. Regulatory environment, Economic structure, so that's the first 50%, right? Political and economic risk, then economic structure. So we get into all the economic information here. National savings to GDP, real GDP growth. Okay, China is going to score highly here. China growing at 7% a year. So it's strong in that part. So then they give them the rating. Band A, very safe, okay? Then, band B, we start paying attention, okay? We have an economic policies or political structure, which can be worrying or cause for concern. No major risks with financial transactions, but we need to watch the political and economic risks. Then here, band C, they have some problems, okay? They may offer exciting opportunities, but we should be very cautious. Some countries at the moment, like Vietnam, was growing quickly, right? You can get a lot of opportunities, but uh, we can have, they have some issues, some problems. Band D, uh, we should carefully consider any investment and perhaps postpone it because there's serious economic and political problems, right? Greece a couple of years ago had that kind of situation. Then lowest rating, maybe in war or civil war, and very high risk. So, do you have any questions about the uh, economic risk or political risk? You can see that these are all the things that company analyzes. Okay? We don't have to analyze all those things ourselves. We can if we want, but it's better to use the company like EIU or Euromoney or other source of information. Okay? So then let's take a break for 10 minutes. Oh.